lots of the program uh, methodology or the way to approach field work is quite different. Um, so apologize for anything you feel a bit funny, but uh, you can give me feedback later. The Yunnan province, the region is home for members of 26 ethnic minority populations, as well as the majority Han Chinese. And each ethnic minority group has its own distinctive music, culture, language, and a set of religious practice. Yunnan's mountainous environment historically prevented people from easily traveling in and out of the province, which enabled many of these minority communities to develop and sustain their diverse cultural tradition over a lengthy period. Meanwhile, intermarriage and the mingling of groups in shared localities had also stimulated some sharing, assimilation, appropriation, and explicit reinvention. Today, many of these groups are under great pressure to assimilate to the norms of the majority Han population, and they are also subject to a rush of incoming cultural influence from many parts of the world, which they access through China's proliferating digital social media platforms, and to the numerous impact of a globalized market, economic market. My research thus takes place at the moment of change where traditional culture is often in declining and sometimes being recast through government sponsored intangible cultural heritage schemes by tourism initiatives and through the agency of NGOs and individual musicians and activists. So, I spent uh, two years in Yunnan province for the field work, and I travel lots of places. Mm -hmm. So I just uh, now play a few um, pictures. So you see the di diverse environment of Yunnan. This is uh, Aohai, Dali. This is Honghe. So we call river, uh, Red River. This river actually towards the Vietnam border. So that's connected. And then you will see in the, because Yunnan province had two seasons, they call a dry season and a wet season. So in the dry season, especially the winter is almost a few months, no any raindrops, not like island. So you see the riverbed completely dry. And they also have like lots of nice place. And here is like a um, forest and the, the field combined area very close to the Banna, Xishuang Banna see The view is very nice. That's the home of a shaman. When I visit him, I talk by so well, it's great. And this is from Zhou Chen. That's the Bai people when they are in the festival. And this also Bai people. And I want to say, although you see they wear the, their traditional clothes, but actually they all have lots of set of traditional clothes. And because, you know, we like fashion, they like fashion too. So they also add some elements each time, a hat and a skirt and the colors and the dressing up or necklace, that sort of thing. And here is the Yi people in the Ajahe, it's in the Honghe County. Um, you will see the left picture is a lot of their kids. Because I went to that, that village, I got the feeling was wow, so many kids. Then I asked them, they say, averagely the family had a three to five children. And usually nobody look after them. So they just uh, play in the village. And they usually grandparents look after their kids. So you see um, um, a grandma is, is there, the little, little baby is on grandma's back. That's quite nice spring bus. And uh, here is a village called Bangjia in uh, Hani ethnicity village in the Puar County. And uh, I want to show this picture here is, we want to know, although Bangjia is located in a very remote area in China, 
where vehicle access remains extremely difficult. Political administration from China's central government actively in place, which includes several important politics. Here are two examples I spotted when I during my visit. The left targeted poverty and affiliation. The right, right hand side is called registered impoverished household. So the photo hung on the front wall is the chairman of China, Xi Jinping. The picture acts as a reminder of who the household is supposed to set for their financial support. It's unusual to see it's in the urbanized area. So, so far I have two projects in Yunnan. First is uh, Caroline, it's about women and sustainable development in traditional culture. And the second is that newly founded the ERC starting ground is about social digital platform and the sustaining traditional culture. Uh, this is a few um, memory because it's finished, <laughs> it's Caroline. And that's uh, sponsored uh, by the Marie Curie and IRC. And so I just give a brief title called Apply Cultural Heritage as a Means of Sustainable Development, Voice of Women Cultural Barriers in Yunnan, China. This project mainly aims to build a new model through collaborative applied research that optimize opportunities for economically disadvantaged and ethically ethnically <laughs> marginalized women from ethnic group in Yunnan. And this is the second uh, project and uh, start from this June called Everyone is a Curator, Digitally Empowering Ethnic Minority, Music Sustainability in China for eCura. So eCura relies upon research in three ethnic minority villages in China's Southwest border each has its own music, language, and the performative culture. Ikura addressed the urging the challenge faced by the socially marginalized when striving to sustain their culture under the impact of urbanization, digitalization, labor migration, political interference, and so on. It sees upon new advances in digital social media to build a new opportunity for ethnic communities to control and curate their own heritage. Ikura asks, how can we empower ethnic communities to be the main actor in sustaining their cultural heritage through their daily participation in digital social media? Ikura has four intermediate research goals. Do you want to go through one by one? That's actually the presentation when I in the, vibe, uh, in the interview for, to, to, to bid this, yeah, so if you're interested, but it's not really related to your subject. Okay, thank you. Anyway, let's control the within three minutes. So won't be long anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so Ikura has four intermediate research goals. First, to uncover and understand the barriers which prevent the villages from full and equal participation in digital platform. Second, to support them build self-reliance in their new digital circumstances. Researching these goals requires action-based methods, such as discussion with community leaders to establish shared goals, participation in villages online and offline cultural activities, and organizing workshops that lead to new understandings and new digital capacities. The third goal is to research how the villages develop their critical awareness as curators of their endangered culture. The key action proposed here is to create tailored programs for widely used social media platforms such as WeChat. This will add indigenous language voice controls and an image-led user interface to enable villages to make videos and upload and share them online without having to rely on written Chinese. The final goal is to connect these crowdsourced video materials into a globally accessible web database. 
The key breakthrough of eCura lies in its use of emerging digital technologies to in place disadvantage the people as a curator of their own cultural expression. Creating an audio interface in each of the local language is especially an innovative aspect. Its central methodological strength is the research team's reflective engagement with emerging aspiration or reservation expressed by the community members when defining and refining their own heritage. As PI, I will work through collaboration with communities with whom I have established connections to create a working model of socially responsive research with great potential for adoption and adaptation by other communities and researchers globally. And now I'll go back to the NGO. Anyway, that's all based on my working experience from NGO, good and bad, both sides. So China is a party state culture with a strong central control to political power, as everyone here know. NGO has always watched carefully under the Chinese government. Now NGO operate in wide spectrum of field for education, poverty elevation, community development, environment, health, and uh, provide lots of service and support for modernized group in Chinese society. So in fact, NGOs in China have the capacity to be the alternative social service providers and have generally proved to be effective at this task when they are provided with the space to operate. So I'm going to talk about three NGOs today. And uh, first, uh, top two are the NGO I actually working with, with um, from 2017 to 2019, called Eco Woman and uh, Yuan Shen Studio. And also we we'll add uh, another one called Lan Xu today as a alternative and a different case to show the diversity of their function. So I will raise um, interest to why we need an NGO. So I will start from the story of a musician called Wang Li Liao and his I own you story. Can you guess I own you? What that mean? Okay. Um, anyway, when I explain. So this Yi musician, he's 72 when I visit uh, him. He's a very established Yi musician. So when the local officer want to show their culture to outsider, so they always organize people to perform. So one day the Wang Liliang got a call say, come in the county and we need your performance and bring 20 women and I will pay all the cost. Oh. And so, so he organized and uh, rent a, a, a vehicle then went there and uh, the woman won't like let you say, okay, I will give you money two months later. No, you have to give them cash. So anyway, so altogether the cost is 1200 Chinese yuan. But uh, when finished, uh, the local officer earlier contacted and say, okay, actually I have no money to pay you right now. So I owe you this money. That's the receipt to say, okay. I owe you this 1200. So I just say, although like a local officer, especially in the cultural administration, they actually doing that sort of the cultural heritage, sustainable work, but they sometimes fail to do the job. So the NGO is the alternative power or force in this role. <clears throat> so I first want to say the Eco Woman. Eco Woman is built in 2001, actually when I, uh, last year, uh, final year, I'm working with them. Their license already cancelled by Chinese government. So actually, I talked the last train when working them, and their way of working is I call community based approach. See, that's the, all the activities I went there. The first actually is me. I help them to sell vegetable every Friday afternoon, and uh, they have a shop to self uh, sell the food for the uh, uh, the the vegetable planted from the partner village. And so all the money they gathered, they were give the money back to the villages. So villages get the support, financial support. But uh, 
their their vegetable claim is a uh, green vegetable, so very very expensive. How they can make sure every Friday the vegetable gone? See the right side. They have an intern from the U.S. They will give like English corner to provide free English education to the customer kids. Wow. It's it's quite smart. See that's the, the, the kids. It's quite interesting. And they, they had a part in the village, the first one called Qifeng village. That's also the one I chose the, to be the part of the village in my eCura project. See that village, the women there, they carry very, very heavy things. So later I see some women, see the first one, they, their back is a bit kind of bendy because the, and the women there, they usually wear the traditional clothes that the men not. See, that's quite obviously. And the, the lady here, he is the head of the village. And that's the rice seeding festival is actually, we help them to revise the best festival when I and the NGO Eco Women, we went there. So, see. Okay, so when we initiated that, we only had uh, 50 villages joining us. But uh, later, when this uh, rice already, like they can harvest, uh, already more villages want to join. So that time, uh, several hundred villages joined the activity. We call the Harvest Vegetable uh, Festival. So it's, uh, it's kind of, you see, very crowded. And then later, we had an increased impact. Actually, the local government and social media, they noticed that we did a very good job. So that, that the job we did become one of the job the local government did to, to, to sustain their culture. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of quite interesting. You see how step by step to, and the village too is the Li Sichuan village. That's not far from Kunming. So we visit there very often and play with them. That's the mother. Uh, it's a bit light because uh, the the child voice, and uh, also we, they have lots of the dance and the very amateur. I just play a bit. That's a meow, and they're ready. See, when the wedding, they always like whole village people will go back to the village to celebrate the this event. So actually based on what eco woman did, I found that that's very important for participatory oriented working method. From that point is kind of social bonding, community building is important, but the performance skill isn't a priority. And, uh, but here I still notice some, some space like NGO try very hard and uh, really try very, very hard. And, but we still notice something need to improve is like uh, the NGO, lots of NGO, we have a very good intention, but uh, the, the Luo Hai Yan, the Miao girl, she's also part of the staff, uh, one staff in Eco Women, she said actually, she noticed the NGO people still use their method and the thoughts and ideology as the urban people to put that idea to onto the villages, so that's not be right. And the second one is the traditional culture and take a sustained traditional culture as a mission we call Yuan Shen Studio. So they have lots of things listed here. And yeah, just a quick little glance. And that's the three key members. The lady, you see the notice, the head of the, this is the woman. So you see actually the, in the, this area, lots of women take a crucial role for, for sustained culture and the, uh, for the NGO, the organization are manageable. And that's the various activities they did. They got the festival and they organized performance. They find the funding from uh, Hong Kong. You know, if they got the funding from mainland China, it's very difficult. So she's quite smart. She got a quite rich business man from uh, Hong Kong, like sponsor him a big sum money so they can organize the whole performance in their bigger uh, cinema. They did the ones. And they also, they went to the village, you see they token, tokenized the photograph for them. And we also went to the forest, the real forest. 
and uh, record uh, the ceremony. The lexical offering sacrifice to the tea and trust. Oh, sorry. I need to go back. See, like if I'm ethnomic college, I will observe anything. We won't do anything like you need to stand here. Let me put, uh, let me take a photograph for you or hand this one higher than the head or something. We'll do everything what they have already. But this NGO, they want to make the nice photo, a documentary. So they did a lot of inter, inter, uh, interference of that. Anyway, let's see. Still not seen yet. Let me. And also here is even worse than I noticed that they, they try to sustain the shaman music. So they ask a question when recording his performance. He asked, uh, because at that time we noticed there were two trees in the uh, village, one is bigger, one is small. So the, the, uh, the shaman say, this is the dragon god and this is the, um, this is the earth god. Yeah, if I remember clearly. Anyway, there is so, and uh, the NGO person asked, so why one tree big, one tree small? Is that kind of big one is more powerful? He said, no, because this tree is not same, not just, just the same, it, I mean, just different size. But the, the NGO person still uh, asked and say, but I heard about uh, the dragon head is more, a uh, uh, dragon god is more powerful than the earth god. Mm -hmm. So the NGO man is become not sure, say, oh yes, you are right, maybe. <laughs> so I think it's really like the outside people, they put their voice on the top of the local people. Okay, so that, 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 that's the why my own thought is, The research have noticed that many actions undertaken by government or international agency are based on outsiders' own interpretation as to what cultural heritage is and how it might best be sustained. Sometimes this results in the further marginalization of women as cultural bearers, as external experts speak over the voice and the sensitivities of these people themselves. And that's a quite good example. And uh, they it's very successful. So I want to put here as an example, like a commercially successful example. And uh, that's the, they, yeah, it's still working. Let me play. That's the made the close. You know, I heard about Ireland also have that sort of machine, right? Oh, there's no Irish. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> And they also have a, like a shop. Shop, they, they pretty close, they combine lots of the fashion designer and they're very pretty. Lots of the customer go there just to make a nice photo so they can put on WeChat to show off how they travel, the, how they, so they actually engage the current like fashion very well as a good example. But in turn, this NGO, they pay the, and the village woman, they made that clothes much more high pay than they can get from other place. Okay, I think it's going to finish. Let me see what, uh, okay. So my observation on NGO success is uh, they raise the self consciousness of the ethnic group to protect their culture. So we, they notice that action can't rely on the simple propaganda like why Chinese cultural official does. Instead, it needs to be nurtured by various activities and the atmosphere which gradually build up. So NGOs community-based approach is an effective way to gather the villages together to practice their music, dance, and their tradition. But the meanwhile, I observe their limitation is interventions by NGO, whether local or international, actually the eco women, they all sponsored by the, one is Holland, one is German, one is Canada, because I want to know where the, their money come from. So it basically that's a kind of international NGO, mm -hmm. if you think about the funding purpose. 
and the intervention from them can be very strong impact as urban values and understanding transform local perspectives and expectations rather than allow the cultural barriers to actively reshape their inheritance to adapt to the contemporary social world around them. That's the two citation uh, inspired me to write uh, this Yossi Ground. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, whatever the culture sustained have to be on the solid foundation where people are to the main actor in their future. So my talk is finished. Welcome to any question. Okay. Any question? Okay. Thank, Thank you, you Doctor. This is very inspiring. Very